I'm sorry. Shit. Oh, I'm sorry. You think flagstone's gonna look right for a lava planet? <laughs> and on on that note, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. <laughs> Bienvenido. Well, well, on the subject of fucking lava rock, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's I Got Next uh, Games Radar's weekly talk show, where we bring in somebody who who does not work in the video game press or in video games this is the, we we play video games with people who do things that are not in the world of video games that we find fascinating uh and this is this being destiny week on games radar uh because there's this fuck there's this thing coming out called destiny the taken king today which never i have never heard of it i never heard of it it's why well, i guess it's like an indie thing it's like a steam early access thing oh that's that's the thing that uh yeah. uh george mcfly's talking about in back to the future mm -hmm. he says, you're my density yes uh he <laughs> and then and then he looks at carolyn in the city <laughs> yeah. with his binoculars yes and then master chief shows up oh he master chiefs a lot he to master her. chiefs <laughs> The whole time, yeah, that's a really disturbing movie. Yeah, it's really upsetting. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, there, there's like attempted rape. There's there's like some Oedipal issues. Mm -hmm. There's disappearing from reality. The guy from Taxi builds a time machine. Yeah, yeah. What Nobody about watching games? knows what Taxi. <laughs> here's a fun. Here's a fun game to play that I do with my friends a lot, uh, which is the you know the scene in Back to the Future where it, you see uh, uh, Marvin. Marvin Berry. Right? Marvin Berry, it's your cousin yeah. Marvin. Yeah. Marvin Berry. Marvin Berry. Well, just like pretend you're Marvin, but then like insert a, a like a different band or something. It's your cousin Marvin. Marvin Eye Blind. <laughs> <laughs> it's your cousin Vegetable Loaf. <laughs> it's your cousin Marvin. Marvin Loaf. Softballs. Softballs for days. Lobbing them up and. This right guy, right here, ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is our guest this week. This is Matt Little. Hi. Comedian, writer, host. Matt has worked sort of all over the entertainment world over the past decade. Thank you, that's you, very you've kind. done some writing for Saturday Night Live, done some writing for David Letterman's I Late have. Show, uh, working with MTV on a couple of projects, is a regular at the Upright Citizens Brigade, mm -hmm. currently hosting uh, the BYOT Night, uh, host of the podcast... Matt and Brett like comics? Love yep. comics? Love comics. Love, Love comics. comics. Is it like comics sometimes? Well, sometimes it's like comics, uh, but <laughs> if it's the new Blood Strike by Rob Liefeld, then it's, <laughs> it's a completely different L word. It's, it's... <laughs> the end of the first issue, the end of the first issue of Blood Strike is a woman named Tragedy Anne, uh, who is clearly a, a Harley Quinn knockoff, holding Blood Strike's penis in a jar, but it looks like a sandworm. Oh no! Ah, uh, because anatomy. No. no. It's, I I'll show it to you. It's on the uh, iPad. I'll show it to you later. Well, it's I felt so, amazing. Happy to be here. Thank yes. you so much. Hi everybody. So well, that sort of level of attention to detail mm -hmm. in, in pop culture is is a why you and I are friends. Oh, of course. Matt Matt and I have known each other for for many many years, and also why I brought you here. Mm -hmm. to talk about this video game that we're playing. Uh -huh. uh, everybody, we are playing a little thing called uh, Oni, as I'm trying to make our TV actually let us play Oni, mm -hmm. uh, rather than just streaming Oni to you. Oni, <laughs> the, there is relevance here. This is related to Destiny. Yes. In another world, you wouldn't be playing the Halo MMO that is Destiny. Right. You would you would be playing the Oni MMO, released literally four or five months before Halo. Yes, it was. It, uh, it was Bungie Bungie West, right? Yeah, it was Bungie West. Uh, it was their only. I think their only official release because yeah. then they got that Halo money and they were like, the, it was just like Halo for days. Oni, more like Noni. Let's Hello. get up on that Halo train. Um, so this is uh, heavily influenced by Ghost in the Shell, as you, as you can tell by the... <laughs> really? Yeah. The, oh. future, the future anime cop lady with purple hair who answers directly to a bald old man with, like, the wings on his hair? I know, it's very subtle. It's, <laughs> it's a very you subtle would never influence, know. yeah. You would never know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, well, Bungie was a complete unknown when Oni happened. Like, yeah. They, like, they had Marathon. They had the Marathon games. Right. 
Which, like, if you were the one person playing Mac video games in the yeah. mid-90s, you yeah. loved Marathon. You Love were like, it. nobody likes Quake. Nobody, <laughs> no, <laughs> nobody likes Quake. I don't are you guys even... playing Quake? Quake? We're going to go play Marathon. We're going to play Marathon. Enjoy your Trent Reznor, you losers. Yeah, enjoy <laughs> Trent Reznor. Enjoy <laughs> Trent Reznor. I don't care. I'm going to go play this. And then they, they would, like, literally... You're like a guy from Nine Inch Fails. <laughs> 90s meat beard? 90s meat beard. Yes. Meat beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a guy. This is a guy yeah. in a, a, a Megatron button-up club shirt. It's, a, it's like XXXL. Yes, yes. Even though he only weighs 115 pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His opinion levels are over 9,000. Uh, <laughs> nicely done. Thank you. Wow. Comet. I just. Wow. I, I like. I have to savor that. See, this is why you are good at improv comedy. Thank you. And and I, I think this is why I've ended up like going into criticism is because I can't stop myself from taking a step back when something is delivered with that much aplomb and yeah. being like, oh, ooh. <laughs> you, you stop, you stop it, so you roll good. it around, and mm-hmm, and uh, the t- <laughs> hints of oak. <laughs> So, Elderberry. Yeah. So let's. Did you play Oni? I did. You played Oni. When I did. First so came out? yes, this was actually uh, my uh, my ex wife. Her brother gave me this game because he, he didn't want it anymore. Uh, <laughs> it's true. You, you know, it's always a good mark of a game when, yeah, yeah. when somebody's like, "Here, I don't want this." Right. Uh, same day, I uh, he had donated this to me because he was done playing it. I also picked up. Uh, uh, MGS2, Sons of Liberty. So two very different gaming experiences. Very different uh, games picked up at the same time. But very, very much like indicative of an era. Yes. When when those two things like so Metal Gear Solid Five just came out. Mm-hmm. I don't think that you would ever see something like Oni released in a case at a store these days. No. No, this is... So, taking a look at this game right now and looking at the sort of gameplay and even the, the gameplay value of it, this definitely seems like the type of thing that would come out on, say, like, iOS today. Right. Right? Like, this is this is a D-pad, uh, like a touch sensor D-pad, uh, moving left and right, and then you can just all, you button can, mash it. You can totally also tell that this, like, started life as a PC game. Yes. Like, just, just the fact that she moves around and, like... These, these very sort of rigid ways. But yeah, I, yeah. I say... There are guys hotboxing just on the other sides of this room, <laughs> as you can tell. Just, just All about that in. vape life, bro! <laughs> hey, hey, uh, Motoko. I mean, not Motoko. I yeah. mean, uh, you want you want the popcorn flavor or the cherry flavor? Yeah, bro, give me that. I'm about that cherry life. I, I'm not kidding. The other day, I was walking down the street, and, uh, I saw a like like a little stand. It wasn't a proper store, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it has a a sign outside of it that it says "Living in Vape Paradise." No. And, <laughs> and are so, you serious? Yeah, like like they didn't say that. It, like it, it, I thought like why don't you just go with Vape Paradise? Yeah, living in Vape Paradise. Well, that's because you know. If it just says vape paradise, you just think, oh, I've stumbled across vape paradise. But this way, you know someone is in there. <laughs> You're trapped. Yeah. You're stuck. I'm trying to figure out what the tutorial wants me to do right now. Go to the beginning of the perimeter I'm until you reach the end target. Okay. Dash along the perimeter of the room until you reach the end target. I was target. really worried that it was like going to tell me to stay within that gray line. Uh. Precision... So that's the other thing, the, the controls on this, so, you know, one of the things that, you know, Halo did so well is, is porting over sort of the precision of PC gaming in the way that you could really fine tune it. Oh no, wait, it does want me to hit all the arrows. Oh, no thank you. Yeah, no, I have to hit all of the arrows. Yeah, and as you can see, this uh, they didn't quite get that done with, uh, with this game. <laughs> you no. know, there's still a. No. The, the, I do remember the controls being kind of loose on this, which is really frustrating when part of the gameplay requires you to be precise. Right. It's like, it's like getting in a car with your dad and your dad's drunk, <laughs> and he's like, just "Make sure your old man stays between the lines," and you're like seven. You're, you're like, like, oh. Oh. 
You're like you're you 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 assume that this is the way things are done, but yeah, you're slightly yeah. unsettled. Yeah, yeah. Until <laughs> years later, and you ride in the car with your friend's dad, and you're like, oh, your dad's never drunk when he drives. <laughs> None of this is from real life experience. I just want to no, just no, point but that it, out. it is all from the original pitch document for Oni. Yes, which <laughs> was originally out. it's originally a drunk driving game. Started as a a drunk driving game. It was a weird indie hit. Yeah, so Internally now you have to head funny. back to the ATM here to yeah. learn more about how to how to walk and dash and activate. It's really weird for a tutorial. Uh, all right, what is the what is the first game that you ever played? Very first video game. Oh, the first played. video game. Yeah, first video game that you ever played. I ever played was, um, I believe it was Donkey Kong when I was four. Uh, my my oh, like original original Donkey. Kong. Yeah, yeah. My parents' friends had an Atari. And we're talking 83, so I was like three. I was like three or four years old. And they, I remember also playing boxing and actually beating my dad's friend at boxing at three years old and him being so mad that he shut the game off on me. Oh, hey, we've got, we've got uh, Jimmy Wizenhunt of Twitch. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Jimmy. Hello to everybody who's hanging out in the chat. Yeah, Hello, yeah. Coil 780 and Yaudel and Hoplon and Did you guys see the hot new PS4 colors and transparent controllers? I did see those. Those look amazing. Those new battery packs to drop on top of a PS4. Wait, what? Is, I have not seen this. Oh, this is oh. totally news to me. So they just uh, so they announced at Tokyo Game Show that there are there are these new uh, so like the the memory units on the PS4 that you can swap out. Oh yeah. Uh, they make they make them in multiple colors now. So oh you can okay. Add them pop a color on I like that. PS4 I like that. and then they released a bunch of new controller colors as well um, I love I, I love just Oni and, <laughs> yeah, Oni. and the face it is uh, yeah uh, well you know I wanted to everybody is playing Destiny I want to play something that, that the roots of Destiny yeah I yeah I go back to the beginning well what I what I like about what I like about this and what I like what you do here too is that we're we're going back and showing you that, that everybody started someplace Ooh, everybody crazy. knows Everybody knows Destiny. Everybody knows the, the, the quality of the game, what's going on there. But let's not forget that this is where these guys started. So if you're out there and you're trying to develop a game on your own and it's terrible, just remember everybody started somewhere. Yeah, I also want to make it abundantly clear that I'm not awful at video games. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not garbage. The, right. The, the thing that you need to use to jump... Look, man... This week, right now, yeah. right this very second, uh -huh. it is the 30th anniversary of Super Mario Brothers. The Which original is Super Mario Brothers, 30 yeah. years old. That game let you press a face button to jump. That was 30 years ago. Yeah. This game was only 14 years ago. It's half that time. So it had 15 years of, of, of learning from Super Mario Brothers, and yet I need to press the L1 button to jump. That's. This is what I'm doing. Get your shit together. And then, thanks, Bungie. And it's like, Bungie, make practice it, make it jumping. A... Then go to the yellow floor. Practice jumping. That's You know what that says? That says, look, this is going to be, this is a very simple thing in video games, but it's going to be hard as shit in this one because the wow. controls are terrible. Yeah, I want to I make it clear. I'm not so bad at video games that I, like, here, you try this. Well, yeah, okay. Do it. All right. See, <laughs> this is ill kid one. Hello to you, uh, Coil Seven Eighty. Pretty sure I played this on PC. Seems like that was the right call. Oh shit! You did it in one. You did it like twice. And... A... Look, there are no winners here. Yeah, that, that there was... are no winners Those in this game. Oni skills. <laughs> yes, I just Oni'd this. Does game. her back say TGIF? Is that what it's? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm like that's not. This is Officer Urkel. <laughs> Officer Urkel! Was, uh, uh, go get your partner, uh, Officer Winslow. Practice jumping, then go to the yellow floor target and jump to the next room. You know, this is, this is what most procedurals are like in the future. It's just jumping. It's like, Officer, we're going to need you to jump. Hey, we did it. Oh, Shinatama, well done. Advanced movement training initiated. To crouch, plus the L button. This had to be like. Can you imagine if you had to do this at work regularly? Like it's time for your performance review. Yeah. I want you to come in. Here. Listen, listen. Your spreadsheets are amazing. The pivot tables look great, but your jump skills. Your jump skills are garbage. Jump up to the floor target to view the combat training in the next room. 
Oh, okay. Tacit approval? What the hell are you doing here, man? It has been... It's been, been too long. Uh, Jump... Oh, over here. Okay. Spending some quality Rosh Hashanah time with you, John. Oh, nice. lovely. Cheers. Thank you so much, and uh, uh, happy Rosh Hashanah to you. All right, wait. What? Okay, so I, I jumped up there to watch this guy beat the shit out of these two robots. Oh, wait, what is... So, do they want you to go in there? Um... I am much happier just watching this guy get the tar pounded out of him. Yeah, it looks like the the guy from Mega Man <laughs> Legends. Yes, this is this is it's, Rock it's without Me the helmet. Ro Mega Man Volnut. Yes. Does anybody who in Japan making video games think about the way that their names are going to sound? Like, no. did did KG and Afune think like Mega Man Volnut? That sounds great. That's no. that's going to translate into every language on the planet. It's just going to sound natural. <laughs> that is, this this is exactly how. <laughs> no. Tap the button back, backwards. So, okay. man, it's really funny. You can actually you can tell that Bungie made this. Is that you have these big cavernous, featureless gray rooms? Right. With a couple of boxes. Yes. You know what what is in those boxes? What do you guys think is in these boxes that we can't right. open? So like it's it's not a storage room, is it? No, because it's too it's it, there's too wide open to be a storage room. Do they have like are there mats? Is it something like you know in case like because she's clearly not a rookie. Yeah. Wait, how did you do that? Oh, that is uh, tapping backwards, and then L two. Wait, uh, plus L but L two button while in mid jump. Oh, Sutsam twenty seven forty five. Hello. There's so many, so many wonderful human beings joining uh, us today. I'm actually pretty excited about There's also this. a great way to hit an opponent on the ground. <laughs> Do a barrel roll! No, is she doing the triple Lindy from Back to School? <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> Hi, everybody! We're all getting laid! <laughs> Run to the target, point, and jump, flip up to the next training area. Oh, what's a bath without bubbles? Bubbles, get in here! <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. Wish me luck. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, jump onto the crate. So there are, they're anti stairs. Yeah. The crates, the crates literally are just to get somewhere else. They're, they're, these are, these are functional. These are functional crates. They're functional crates. Okay, these are uh, fun crates. <laughs> nah, <laughs> no. never mind. Never mind. So a lot of the, uh, a lot of the. Uh, these are Jonathan Frakes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> A lot of the controls are... It seems like they were really trying to utilize the shoulder buttons in this game a lot more than most games do. Yeah. Whereas, like, a, a lot of face button time on anything else. Throw two punches. And weirdly... Punch punch combo successful! Weirdly take that, gym teacher. <laughs> who, is, who is talking to you, too? Who That's is, true. Where is Shinatama? Uh, right here. Right here. <laughs> this is in there all along. Shinatama was in you. Shinatama was the treasure. Uh, so as we try to plumb through this tutorial section, Matt, you were you were talking before we mm -hmm. gave everybody the barrage of the experience. You, you host Toy Pizza. I do. Well, I, I, I I'm a showrunner for Toy Pizza. The hosts are Nikki and Jesse. I mm -hmm. recently hosted an episode mm -hmm. for uh, Force Friday. Did for an awesome Friday. toy haul, which was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, yeah. As jump I try in. to get through this. Yeah, jump into this business. I, um, I recently hosted the Force Friday episode, which was a lot of fun. I went to Times Square for the, the toy release. Right. And I picked up, uh, I picked up a BB-8 while I was there. Is, is it the cool BB-8? Like the, the oh, radio the control? Sphero one, yes. Yeah, the Sphero one? Yes. It's, the gate, uh, the... The little guy is a lot of fun. I believe that I have... Whoa! Yeah! Oh, baby! <laughs> you just right. Frankensteinered this guy. I, th I think I understand why people have fond memories of this now. Yes. Um, <laughs> the other flashes that indicate the condition of your opponent. Okay. You've beaten your enemy when you see Final Flash! Final Flash. Oh, man. I hated Final Flash. That was, uh, that was the DC crossover... 
Yeah. Where where uh, Barry Allen came back to life so that he could be turned into a show for teenage yeah. girls. <laughs> yes. That was Superman. How is Barry Ly- Barry Allen coming back to life? Because he needs to be a teen heartthrob, but but yes. more approachable than Arrow. Right. <laughs> you, you know we need uh, we need someone that doesn't. I, I just like. Okay, so clearly they're trying to make Arrow be Batman, but they didn't. Right. But they couldn't do Batman. Right. Um, well, they they wanted to hit. <laughs> we're 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 going straight into Arrow nerding out. That's, yes. That's dangerous territory. Continue telling telling okay. us about Toys. So R Us. we got we got someone. Uh, uh, Sup Sam twenty seven forty five. I was able to find a Kylo Ren Star Wars Black Series figure, and there was one left on the shelf. I'll tell you what. I got upstairs a half hour into. The toys being released at that Toys R Us, and they were already almost completely picked over of three and three quarters. The Black Series, forget about it. Um, I read a lot of the reports. I, I do feel fortunate. I think that that location did a really good job of staying supplied. I've read a lot of reports where people got into Walmart at like 12.03, and someone in the store was like, All out of Star Wars. Don't got no more Star Wars. <laughs> I don't know why that's the guy that works here. Why is it the guy that works be- because that guy works at every store. He works at every no store. No more Star Wars. Sorry, we don't got no more warm soda bed sheets. He also works at Bed Bath and Beyond. Um, well, uh, congratulations on that, by the way. Oh, you know Toy Pizza as well. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm hoping that's what you meant by Toy Pizza, and unless uh, unless you were just like these are two words that I love, uh, back to back. Um, <laughs> I like action figures and pizza. Why? Oh, Rage Line goodness. Poker, stop laughing at best game of 2001, thanks. Um, I'll tell you why. Ra- Rage Line Poker, like, I, like the, the... So something I have discovered in preparing for this yeah. was people were like, oh, what are you going to do for Destiny Week uh-huh. on the streams? We have two talk shows. This There's I Got Next, which is when we talk to somebody who's outside of video mm-hmm. games, and then how it's done. Yeah. We talk to somebody inside of video games. Right. And so we have creative director of Destiny Taken King, Luke Smith, coming on the show on Thursday. Oh, baby. To talk about Destiny. Yeah. And somebody was like, oh, well, like, you guys have to, you know, you have to do Destiny every single day this week. We're like, no. We, we need to go and do something really dumb. Yes. So let's, let's play Oni, and I want a comedian to yeah, yeah. play Oni with me. Uh, and so... I, like telling people this, the the response has been like violent. People are like, "Why do you want to make fun of Oni? Why do you want to make fun of Oni? Because it was not good. <laughs> That's a way. Yeah, because <laughs> well, here's the thing. Because you jump with the L1 button. I don't I, like. I don't even know that we're necessarily like the equalizer we're, pistol. We're not, we're not making fun so much as having fun with it. Right. Right. You know, and but like the. the, the there, there are people love this game. Yeah. So the, everyone's hanging out on the uh, on the uh, on the feed here. What do you guys love about Oni? What are your What are your fondest memories of this game? Because I would love to know. Um, my fondest memories of this game were turning it off and putting another one in the PlayStation. <laughs> yes. See, my okay. I what is? Oh, well, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, what is there? Everyone has a game that they know is implicitly bad, but they still love it. Yes. Oh. Uh, um, what is yours? God. Uh, man. All right. So the first one that comes to mind is uh, I still to this day love mm-hmm. Maximum Carnage for Super Nintendo. Wow. And that game was in. I couldn't get past the church. I can. I can still beat it. I can, no! I can still beat Maximum Carnage. I can get to Carnage, and I can beat Carnage. Really? Uh, I have not done that. Yeah, see, I say, I can still do this. And I'm sitting here in my head going, like, doing the math. When was the last time I did this? It was like uh-huh. 10 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, in my in my head, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I can still do that. And it was 2005 the last yeah. time I did it. But I like that we have to shoot out this Pier 1 display. Right, they have to, to set this up every day. Yeah. Pottery Barn is on, on retainer <laughs> yeah. for future police. <laughs> yes. Uh, so Maximum Carnage, you could, I could not beat that game. And the controls, I, uh, you know, I threw a lot of controllers so uh, playing that game. Here is how to beat that game. Uh-huh. A, <laughs> you have to always save your cloak summons. Yep. Always save your cloak summons. Okay. And then, 
when you are done clearing out all the scrubs and you only have like you only have like doppelganger spider doppel spider oh yeah yeah uh or or siren what was her name shriek shriek oh my shriek! god Susie sue and the banshees yeah man. uh <laughs> poor robot oh you set his ass on fire yeah i don't think he really cares no he does not do? oh we've got uh sonic adventure oh man okay yeah for the dreamcast that and was sonic uh... adventure sucks yeah like sonic adventure Ugh. like i understand why people maintain a a real lasting love for that yeah uh our managing editor at games radar susan Arndt. Susan and I talk regularly about, like, oh, you know, yeah, Sonic Adventure, still love it, but we also recognize that our love of it comes purely from the trailer. Like, the original, oh, like, yes, hair yes, metal yes. trailer yes. for Sonic Adventure. I don't think I can kill this guy. I think I think it wants me to do something that I'm missing That's here. an eternal robot. That's a celestial. Yodel, I still love the terrible muscle game for the NES. Whoa. It is objectively the worst wrestling game ever made. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. I don't think I ever played the muscle game. Oh, it's awful. You, that was the most, like... You've missed nothing, I assure you. Dildonic main character... Yes. In history, there's a guy who has like the cone. Oh yeah, yeah. He's got the he's got the he's vibrator, got, got, the rabbit that's vibrator a head really on. Really inappropriate yeah. wrestling, and on the grand scale of inappropriate wrestling things. I know you're you're talking about uh, a a sport a sport that I love I love pro wrestling where. Um, Wait, what is happening here? I you. What oh, am I seeing? You're not supposed to see that. No, yeah, you're not supposed to see that. That's not. All right. What do we got in the... Oh, I remember thinking Oni had a really badass atmosphere. I like the weapons and the hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was also sci-fi techie, sort oh, of, which I was way into. I, I will say, I do like the character designs in this game. Oh, I yeah! I like the colors. I like the colors, and I like the character designs. Uh, they're, they're really well done. And, again, like, clearly influenced by, by like, anime and manga of the 90s, which I was obsessed with. Yeah, I, I you know, part of the way... Uh, Last week, when I was teasing that we were going to do this stream on the podcast, I was like, yeah, we're going to be playing Deviant Art Disaster Oni. Uh, <laughs> is, yeah. Like, like, yeah. Like, yeah, we laugh. As you because, shoot your flaming Nerf gun. Yeah, which is just really not connecting. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, there's Shinatama. Oh, Shinatama. You did it. Great job. The basic She's dressed up like a complete. juggalo. It took us half an hour to get through the basic training. Yeah. She is, uh, she's the eighth card in the Dark Carnival, by the way. <laughs> what is a Shinatama? <laughs> All my ninjas out there. You know, man, like, God. Was, was Shriek in Maximum Carnage in early Juggalo? Oh, yeah, definitely. She was, yeah. We're, yeah, we're, yeah wasn't yeah. all of Maximum Carnage about Juggalos? Was just the... It was about Spider-Man hating family. <laughs> That's what it was. And they were just about. trying to make a they family. They were just trying to make Demo a Goblin, <laughs> Carrion, the Doppelganger. That's what Shriek, it was. Carnage, and that was wow. Yeah, man. I, I, that's but ladies and gentlemen. Here that on, is. Here on, I got next. We're blowing your minds with yeah. secrets about the early days of Destiny developer mm -hmm. Bungie and secret. Prop Juggalo. Hat played this game when uh, they were about thirteen or fourteen. Brings back fond memories of adolescence and not being jaded. Yeah, you know, not being Fair enough. jaded. So, there's a weird, weird moment when you're like a pop culture obsessive. Uh huh. Where Syndicate <laughs> Warehouse. Syndicate Warehouse, Chapter One. Oh crap! All right, wait. Griffin. Griffin. Griffin's Griffin. Griffin, who it puts me. clearly puts gelatin in the only hair he has left to make it stand up mm -hmm. that way in the back. If those, those aren't Liberty Spikes, what would you call those? <laughs> you're, you're going with the uh, the Astro Boy Spikes. Astro, Bo yeah. A Astro Boy spikes. I like that. How would you, if you were like actually going to make Astro Boy like a three dimensional like being? Yes. What direction are those spikes going in? Are they Great are they question. front and back? Are they like angular to the side? Like, I'd imagine. Like, I mean, I would I would go three quarter, like sort of just off this way. Right. Sort of like a, an, an askew unicorn's right. horn. Yeah, that's what that's the impression that I get. Yeah. But at the same time, like it's like it's some like Lovecraftian non Euclidean geometry shit happening yes. in those old comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I can't tell like that old man. It's clearly defined. The oh, anime yeah. art makes sense. You, yes. you can see this is going right. this way. Yeah, get in here. 
I'm gonna get up get, on this. Get in this warehouse. Which apparently we're now in a terrorist organization and not the training facility that we were yeah. just in. Notice the flashing health meter in your lower right tactical display. This meter drops whenever you are hit. This meter drops whenever you are hit or fall. Oh, no. Don't let it reach zero. Oh, oh my no. god, I love it! We're not going to get through the first level. If it, we're not going to get to the first level. If it does, you will have lost your life in your mission. Wow. Uh, however, you may restart at any of the save game positions you reached before dying. Okay, button close. Yaddle, that's actually a very good observation. Obs Astro Boy is like Lisa Simpson. They don't function in three dimensions. Yes. Actually, we do, but like you get to see Lisa bald at various points, which does give you perspective on how that the prickly pineapple hair right. works. Wait, how do you shoot again? I'm, I oh, totally it's R1. Like, it's R1, R1 is shoot. Oh, of course it is, yes. Uh, which is, God, yeah. All right, we're just going to like jump into it. This really does still feel like a bunch of games. Yeah. Oh, the movement and the strafing and everything is very it, much it's reminiscent. Still, like, it's it's so weird to think that this game was released so close to Halo, because yeah. Halo... Especially the leap in technology. And you know who else developed this? Rockstar North. Ro Rockstar North helped out. Yeah. Because they this got... Wasn't it cancelled for a while? Like, it was like they lost their funding, yes. and then Rockstar... There was that weird period, like, 15, 10 years ago, where Rockstar would swoop in... Oh, this is how a gentleman goes down. I and just help, jumped. ...and help people finish games. Yeah. Like, they, they did the same thing with Red Dead Revolver, which was a oh, freaking Capcom right. game. And then Capcom was like, no, this is trash, let's cancel it. <laughs> and Rockstar like, no, no, was no, like, no. Nope. <laughs> uh, games Radar's own Dave Roberts hanging out from the makers of Halo. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you have to make you have to make the radio spot right now for Oni, so, and do it in radio voice. And this is this is what we hear as as the spot for I, this. I, I'm I'm a douchebag. Uh huh. And tacit approval. I did not put two and two together until I just thought about it. Tacit approval isn't just the handle of a gentleman here on on uh, Twitch. That is also uh, an old friend, Dan Thompson. Oh. That is Dan Thompson. Happy belated birthday, Dan Thompson. Happy belated birthday, Dan Thompson. Uh, <laughs> whenever you were hit in With whom fall, you used to live in yes, Dismerica. Dismerica. Uh, a fictional nation. Yes. With very real power. With very real consequences. Uh, oh, baby. All right. Great news, gang. We unlocked the door. Press X to open the door. For more crates! Boy, I'll tell you what. Living in New York, I... Cannot tell you how much I imagine happens in warehouses full of crates because in a video game, so much does. The flashing yellow arc on your lower left tactical display indicates that you have a new objective and corresponding compass point. You're heading toward it when the arc is at the top of the display as you approach it. The compass arc will widen. The arrow indicator inside the compass ring tells you whether the objective is above or below you. The obstacles may be in your way, so a direct path is not always possible. Button close. Okay, great. So, new objective received. You must make contact with TCTF operative Chung. Chung! Who has been investigating this warehouse for syndicate activity. I still want to hear your radio spot for this game. <laughs> so what is what is the radio spot? I want you to do it in radio voice. All right. So wait. Are, are we... Is it a radio spot promoting what's happening in the game? Or is it about the game? No, you're selling the game in 2002. You flip on, you flip on you said, Drive Time drive Alternative time, Rock. And it's, it's We're about to get into a rock block full of cream featuring my sacrifice. Ladies but first, this, this commercial break. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, right before we get back to 7 Mary 3, I want to tell you about a hot new product from Rockstar Games. R R R Rockstar Games. This is a hot new item for people that like The Matrix mm. and Equilibrium. Do you think that's area breathing? <laughs> we give you the anime stylings from the people that brought you Marathon in Onai. Oh, 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 oh my Onai. <laughs> Purple haired ladies in empty warehouse rooms, forward flips, Awkward targeting, it is all here. What's behind that door? You'll never know, it doesn't open. <laughs> and then something about, you have to go down to Media Play to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Available at Coconut Records. So what are you, 
supposed to be doing? Oh, right? here we go. So, uh... This I, is I'm... another bungee feature. Like, like... Oh, the, yes. The fact that, like... The fact that you you have no clue where you're supposed to go next. Uh-huh. Like, so I stopped playing Destiny shortly after it came out. Oh, really? Yeah, I, and, like, it was just because I... And I'm very excited to play The Taken King because my understanding is that The Taken King's far more story-centric. Yeah. Uh, but my, my problem with the initial release of Destiny was that I didn't feel like there was a, a beginning, middle, end. And no. I need, like, that Wrong. sense of progress. Um, and the leveling was just so plotting. Like, I wanted to play by myself a lot of the time. Yeah, and, and solo a lot of it is based on, like, yeah. guilds and, yeah... So, so you are, I think you're, you're kind of in the same field as I am. I am very much a solo gamer. Um, agree or disagree? Oh, very, very much a solo gamer. What, what do you like, personally, what do you like more about solo gaming uh, versus, um, versus like MMOs and online play? I, uh, like it is, like what I was just saying, like I really, like I, oh! I gravitate to something that starts it evolves in some way in the middle, whether that's uh-huh. like a linear narrative or must get in contact with TCTF operative chum. Right. Uh, if something can, like, I, I want a rising arc and then I want a conclusion and I want a game to stop. Yeah. So, number one, like, the way I consume video games at this point lends itself to that style of play. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, part of working in the video game press means that you're playing a lot of different things very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And especially when, you know, part of my primary life was reviewing games. Yeah. Then, you know, it was going to be... It, it, I had to play a lot of things. I had to play them very quickly. Right. So, you know, getting ensconced in something, even like Diablo, where online play is pretty simple, is I could do it for a while, but then that's the end of it. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna try to make it on this crane because why not? Because why not? Because what else are you supposed to be? Maybe, maybe Chung is up there. Nice yes. landing. Uh, all right. That's it, see, and you bring up an interesting point too. And I think a lot of uh, in part of that for me wound up being like, oh wow, I really beat my own ass there, didn't I? Um, oh hey, oh hi. Where did this guy come from? I have no idea. <laughs> the game was just like. You have been doing nothing for too long. Okay, press. Yes! Nice. Oh, now I'm like armor from uh, Joss Whedon's amazing or astonishing X Men run. <laughs> That's right. Her hereditary, uh, her family armor. Yeah. Oh, so oh. you just had to kill those guys and now you can leave. Yeah. So. Um, so I think I'm sort of in the same boat as you were. Like I, and, and a lot of that comes from when I was younger and I didn't really have anybody to play games with where I got very invested in uh, the narrative. Mm-hmm. Uh, the narrative features of gameplay, which I love. I love a great story. I love a great story. I love getting engaged in it, and I love getting lost in it. And if a game doesn't have that, I feel like I don't I don't connect with it. The last time, I'll be honest with you guys, the last time I played a game online, or attempted to actually actively play a game online was Madden 15. Oh, wow. Ten years ago, uh, a guy was beating me 96 to 3 at halftime. At halftime. And Madden, Madden 2005, you mean? No, this is, oh, no, Madden This is 15. Madden 2000, like the anniversary edition yeah. from oh, 2004. Oh, 25. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is from 2004. Um, he, he says to me, he, this is before headsets, he types to me at halftime, he says, I will, uh, go ahead and, and, and jump All right, on get that. in there. Um, I will show you mercy if you say that I'm the best. And I was like, I am not getting into this dicks. Wow! <laughs> I always want to hear the Ninja Guide End song anytime anybody dies oh, in a video game. Oh, no. Look at how sad everybody is. What's happening to that guy? Well, who was that guy that he got the shit beat out of him and we never even saw him? Oh, man. All right. So, I, okay. Here we go. I'm getting back in there. It's the wrong screen. All right. Somebody got paid real U.S. dollars to design this level. Yeah. You're not wrong, single and loving it. Uh, little time out, everybody. 
If you are just tuning in, welcome to I Got Next, Games Radar's weekly talk show, uh, wherein we hang out with somebody who makes things outside of the world of video games and play video games with them. To celebrate Destiny Week here at Games Radar, we are playing the Lost Bungie Classic? I love the... I think you pronounced it right. Classic? 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 Yeah. Maybe? Possibly? Uh, we were playing the Lost Bungie game that came out just before Halo back in 2001, Oni, mm -hmm. uh, and failing spectacularly at it, and playing the game with us is comedian Matt Little. Hi. Uh, and I am Anthony John Agnello, Games Radar's senior social editor, and, uh, yeah, we are, we are talking about Bungie's history, we're talking about how to play this game, and Matt was just telling us a story about why you tend not to play online games. Yeah. So, I the the last time I like actively tried to play, well, I guess the last time I tried to play was WWE 12. Someone mentioned earlier that it was glitchy as hell and the online lagged so badly I got the hell beat out of me in two minutes. But I was playing Madden 2004, the 15th anniversary one, and a guy was beating me 96 to three at halftime, and he says he types to me because we didn't have headsets then. I will. I will show you mercy. I will grant you mercy if you say that I'm the best. And I was like, I am not engaging not in this dick this, swinging yeah. contest. I said, no thanks, I'll see it through. And then he quit the game partway through the third quarter. So I actually won, but it wasn't fun. There was absolutely nothing fun about being railed on that badly by someone who is clearly so good right. that they can rack up 96 points in two quarters. He, you know, it was constant shallow kicks high shallow kicks at the kickoff that he would recover before I would even get to it. Okay, um, wait. Time out. Manifest contains... So the crate... By the way, we're now getting a, a canonical reason for the crate. Yeah, the usual transvisual spectrum markers. You know, the huge. So what does this want me to do? Mm. Does it want me to interact with these crates? You got out of this room. Oh, okay. So turn around. Yeah. Uh, other way. Yeah. They're, uh, right to your right now, strafe over. Oh! Interact with that guy, yeah. That'll let you... That'll unlock the door over here. Ryan Banks, 04, hello to you. Man, that is the... All right, yeah, all right. So that is open now. So then that gets us into the next room that and is this, impossible and get, to And getting from. out of this room is about killing dudes. And this is where we broke our neck last time. This is yeah. where... <laughs> this is where... I forgot This is where we falling. committed suicide falling yeah will will end you so how did that interaction with that guy end oh he got mad at me for not saying that he was the best and quit the game so i actually won yeah i won a game through forfeit because he gave up but it wasn't fun yeah. there wasn't anything fun about that and i don't i i don't have a a, a group of people and at this point now i really only like when i sit down to play it, I have odd hours that I can actually devote to gaming, so the only thing that is... Oh, here you go. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I can devote time to are narrative games. Right. Which is a, a... You know, again, there's so many great narrative games out there, but I do feel like I miss out on stuff like Destiny, where, you know, shout out to uh, Jeremy Bent, John Robert Wilson, and uh, uh, Crystal Beth, who, obsessed with Destiny... Um, playing, uh, playing and raiding and really working in the last month to get all of those equipment upgrades mm. that, uh, that came out in anticipation of taking King. Um, I actually feel like I know what I'm doing now. I you look, like, you look I, I like feel, you're starting I, I to understand it. I feel like there's it. actually, like, a method to this madness. Yeah. Because, alright, so I killed that guy. Yeah. This is really hard to, like... Are these the crates? Are these the crates we're looking <laughs> are these for? these the crates? I don't understand, I, like, and maybe somebody, anybody in the chat who has played more Destiny than I have, and, like, keep in mind, I did not get far into Destiny. I played the, like, I, I leveled my character to eight. I got that far. Is there anything? Yeah. Oh, I think these are the have crates. I, have I tried Hearthstone? I haven't played Hearthstone only because I worked with a guy, Alan Starzynski, obsessed with Hearthstone to the point that... Um, I, I was like, oh, I would be too invested in this. The one I will be playing, I guarantee you, 
I will get myself completely lost in Pokemon Go when that comes out next year. Because <laughs> it's... So the, you're into that. that I'm into stupid. the idea of running out around the world and actually trying to capture Pokemon in New York City. Are you kidding me? That sounds like the best. Yeah. Um, you should have said you suck. The last guy I played had 140 points. That's true. Uh, oh, uh, GR David R. Deli- giving, giving us uh, what I think would be a line in the commercial, the radio commercial for Oni, which is, The screen cannot contain the action-packed events of Oni. <laughs> Alright. So, green door. Green door. I kill the guy. Mm-hmm. Press X button to open this door. Hello. I killed that guy already. Do you like warehouse? Do you like warehouse? <laughs> what? Can you has murder? <laughs> is having red laser gun. <laughs> Come on down, Yorgi's warehouse. Has so much crate. Do you like warehouse? Do you, Do you like... like running around warehouse? Come on down if you are police. Random thug. Person who have nerf gun want to fight other person with nerf gun. So we much have space and where <laughs> we have crate, we have barrel, we have crate covered by tarp. <laughs> How many crate you need? All right, I'm Yorgi gonna... Warehouse have all of them. I'm gonna go downstairs. Oh, Finn Balor's uh, yeah, lift over it's here. His one, it's his one Shout crate. Out That's WWE it. NXT superstar Finn Balor. This is this is how he gets to the ring. Oh, okay, okay. Whoa. So you're supposed to fall down here. Okay. Hello. This is all new. This oh, all now new we have random room. generators connected to nothing at all. Nothing at all. Stupid <laughs> sexy generators. All right. Nicely done. Uh, thank Nicely you. Done. Oh, here's a random guy that we've murdered who was just thinking about his children and what he was going to get his wife for his anniversary. He got but what instead... Was- We've murdered him. He got what was coming to him. I hope I die in a nondescript warehouse when a purple-headed maniac shoots me in the back of the skull. This is not... I am not trying to be incendiary to people that like Halo. Mm -hmm. I like Halo. I like Halo a lot. Why did Halo 1 become the phenomenon it was? Like, I just don't understand why that game connected with people in the way that it did. What is this? You know, that's an act, that's a really interesting question, and I think that it speaks to, if I, if I were to had, hazard a guess based on nothing but my own pot-addled brain, I would say that it came along at a time when gaming, gaming was, was, exploding obviously in the early 21st century but at the same time um the graphics were finally starting to catch up to where pc games were right you know so bungie found the bridge between pc gaming and check console this, gaming. check this out this is like so and like bungie are one of the people that like made this standard mm-hmm. you know how you click in your their left stick to start right. sprinting yes Oh, this Reversion. is... Reversion. It's the slow, dramatic walk. Yeah. Rather than when the you, sprint. When you click on L3, you get to walk the catwalk. Word. <laughs> Turn to the left. Word. Matt Mositosh says, Twitch homepage just sent me here, and the first thing I hear is a Simpsons reference, and now, I am now happy. Mositosh, yeah. <laughs> More like Mositov to that, you. That Hashtag is, blessings. Thank you is, so much. That is what you get here. Yaddle says it was a functional console FPS that made affordable LAN parties possible. That's a really great point. Yeah. That's something I think that we that we haven't mentioned yet is how much... Like, that really did turn, like, LAN gaming... Dude, Chung is dead. What?! Mm-hmm. Dead. Yeah, we found Chung. Oh, man, somebody wanged Chung. <laughs> Oh. Yes. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Mr. Dark Game Infinity 8. Yes, this is the game that Bungie made with Rockstar or Oni. Mm-hmm. For, it came out uh, in early 2001. PC. Oh, no! Whoa! Get out of here. Here's a reject from Age of Apocalypse to be Get out of here. Pun. Super pro. You're not super pro. See, <laughs> super pro? Yeah! Wow. Press R3 to pick up that hypnospray because you can drop shit, I guess. Or did he drop that? He dropped that because okay. I, I 
guy yeah. kicked him kicked him in the soul. Yes. Uh, why? Oh, is... here's a random flat panel television we have in the what, corner. What is the like function of this place? Because most people are filthy console scrubs. <laughs> wow, those are some harsh words, Hoplon42. Hoplon42, you are my favorite. Console baiting over here. What? Yeah. Oh, boy. Kicks for days. Oh, man. We're actually, I think we might actually be at the first level. What is this non-Euclidean nightmare? You're just running into the same room over and over. This is... This is the second time non-Euclidean yes. Also, has come up here. I want a t-shirt that says NPC Lives Matter. Is that... <laughs> is that... That's uh, gotta be a thing. Thank you for teacup. Is that a thing? And also, would I be just assaulted on Tumblr for wearing an NPC Lives Matter shirt. I, like, I honestly think that, like, dude, you gotta, like, bring that to New York Comic Con. You've gotta bring that to PAX. Yeah. That, like, so, a lot of your pop cultural career uh -huh. in, in, in comedy and in, in criticism, because you, you write reviews for Comic Book Resources. Shout out Comic Book Resources! Comic Book Resources, which is, like, uh, man, I... I, I I swear to God, I, I read the crap out of that. And Games Radar is slowly but surely getting into comic books coverage. Yeah? And it's funny, the, the way I... Oh. Th yeah, yeah. We're, we're Hello, building, guys. <laughs> building our way there. Uh-huh. Uh, and, like, something I always think is, like, comic re resources is, like... It's so good if you already love comics. Yes. You know? Uh-huh. And, like, so you do a lot of things. Like, you, you had a... Comic, you have your comic book podcast with Brett. Mm -hmm. You have uh, you have a show for movies called Sequel Machine that yes. that that uh, is performed regularly. Wherein explain the format of Sequel Machine for me. Yes. Uh, so my uh, my former group, I love them to death, Left Handed Radio. We um, we created the format for this show called the Sequel Machine, where we take. We take a blockbuster movie franchise like the first one we did was Spider Man. Right. Right? So then we, we have a bunch of comedy writing friends and we had each of them write a page of a sequel to it. Twenty five pages, because you don't want to go longer than that, trust me, even twenty five sometimes seems like too much. But um, the everybody writes one page, but they can only see the page that comes before their own. So it just devolves into this madness. My favorite, one of my favorites, I think, was when we did uh, Dark Knight Four, where three different occasions Mister Freeze appears because no one knows, and <laughs> Mister Freeze is making all of these ridiculous ice puns because most everyone that is writing it are comedians, and they're like, "How can I exploit the dumbest part of Batman?" Oh, right, Batman and Robin. Right. That's, you know, remember, for it is the chilling sound of your doom. Ah. <laughs> uh. Um, yeah, but that was, that was a, a lot of fun for us to do because, it, you know, we were, were huge pop culture geeks and it was, it was also a way to like work with as many of our comedy writing friends as possible. Right. Um, and, uh, and, and I love, what I love doing, what I love doing and what I would love to continue to keep doing is finding ways to kind of harmonize my ability to write a joke. I think I can. <laughs> he says as he strains his shoulder, patting himself on the back. Um, go, 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 and and my love of like comic books and video game and pop culture and stuff like that. I try to periscope. I like periscoping some well, of my reviews. Well, you notice that, something ooh, that just happened go. for the very first time. Indeed, which was using a panel and then it would show you the door that opened. Yes, rather than rather than just being like, ah, so, something was going on. Guess something was going on elsewhere. Oh, do not remove the memory card for PS2. Wait, this is just the same place as before. Uh, All right, I, I apologize for interrupting. You were, you were saying... No, no, right? that's okay. It, it feels like... it. This feels like, oh, we're in the MC Escher warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the same looping warehouse over and over again. He just went to go get a guy. Did you just go get a friend, or... Oh. oh yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, so we got we got metal geared is what happened. Yep. Use chaff. <laughs> snake. Oh, and, uh, snake. Snake. Not girl from 
Ghost of the Shell. <laughs> this Use... is a sneaking mission. Use D horse. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish I'd know that. That's, that's not what. I that goes... just want that to be a thing that's said. That goes right there with uh, Mega Man Volnut. Yeah. Like, does anybody like? Did anybody say? D horse sounds funny. <laughs> I hope they did. <laughs> horse to me is the funniest word in the English language. Uh, I will always laugh. <laughs> horse, anything, like, and it, it, going back when I would write sketches with Left Handed Radio, I every month I would bring in at least one sketch with the word horse in it, just because I wanted to <laughs> just get perpetual the word horse into the show as, as many, many times as I could. As possible. Um, I to oh. Crap. Oh, got shot. Do you remember how to get out the gun? I know I have a gun, but I don't know how to use oh, it. Oh, was it R three? Yeah, but I keep pressing that. And, all oh, right, well, that guy, guy just dropped his. Yeah, he doesn't have his yeah. anymore. Oh, dog welder! <laughs> Look, it's dog welder from Hitman. <laughs> uh, shout out All Star Section Eight if uh, any of you guys are comic book fans. It is so gross and so funny. Um, Garth Ennis and, and John McCree just like I don't know how they convinced DC to publish that book. But I'm, I'm so glad it. that they did. I have did. not read it yet. It's a sequel, oh, sort of, to the old Hitman book. Zombie, right? oh my gee. It is exactly that. And it is so dull. It is so funny. I just... I'll let you read it later. I love it to death. Um, what do we got? Oh, wow, we blew up over here. Okay. Uh, Bungie were really trying to get people to game on Mac. That's true. Oh, that's right. So yeah. Bungie was... Like a Mac... Uh, they were the Mac Like people. a Mac developer. Halo is going to be a Mac game. That's right. Uh, then Microsoft bought in on it, yep. right? Um, it was going. It was going to be wow, a, great memory. A Mac RTS. Yes. And and then and then Microsoft was like, no, no, we want that. Gr David R dropping some science here. It's because the CEO who took over for Steve Jobs in the early '90s thought games were for babies essentially, so de-emphasized their importance on Mac, which I love then because. Steve Jobs immediately came in and then turned every Mac into a, like a toy spaceship, which press, I love. Press X to speak with this person. Yes. What, what does he do? Say? If you don't, just civilian. Like, <laughs> Thank you. They're holding the warehouse managers hostage. Where so now I'll walk around with invisible lat syndrome. Yeah. Why, bro? So, so like she <laughs> like looks like a person. There are like delineations to her body. Yeah. And this guy looks like he's made out of a series of like balls. Yeah. That have been. Molded into, he looks like an action figure. He looks like you like, can see his points of articulation. Uh, this is um, this is Phil Coulson's older brother. <laughs> He's got invisible lat syndrome. He just Sky. wanders around, bro. Sky, you have to go to this yeah. other room and do something that nobody cares about. Yeah. I, I, if there is anybody who actually really likes Agents of Shield, I apologize for for being dismissive mm -hmm. like that. Oh wow. Uh, Oni was out for the Mac. Oh, not, you could play. I did not realize that. I did not that. realize that either. Thank you for that heads up. That's awesome. Uh, he looks like a project I made in ceramics back in high school. <laughs> that is, he is. Uh, you know, he was. That's why this civilian is named uh, A plus. <laughs> that civilian is called Mom. Put me on the refrigerator. You know, I was always. A, I will say, I do remember always being impressed with her backwards running skill because she stays on the balls of her feet. Yeah, that's which is like, very important if you're running backwards. <laughs> well, I, we don't we don't get to the high stepping yeah tutorial until later when she has right. to work on on her Oh, on I like power. that he's just randomly like fist bumping. This Taxis is, are here, bro. <laughs> this is the same guy who was downstairs. Yeah. And now he's been upgraded to warehouse man. Yorgi, Yorgi only able to afford <laughs> one person. But he wear many hats. <laughs> Fulfill all roles. Fulfill all roles. We have orange crate, gray crate. Oh no! Look at look at the size of this. Place. Oh no! Oh come Whoa. on! Ah! I'm, I gotta say, like once you actually get used to. Shout out to the shout out to like the the work gloves and the knee pads because they understand. Oh, and a weight and a and, and a, a back belt. brace. Yeah. Yep. This guy uh -huh. is he is. Equipped to create it up. Yeah, new objective. New objective. Make sure safety harnesses are attached properly. This is also, you know what, you know what this kind of like has at least like an aesthetic vibe similar to is perfect dark. Oh, There's a lot of perfect dark good environment call. going on in here. Yes, the the like 
the the omnipresent beige walls and etc. Yeah, rare. Uh, rare. It seemed like they wanted to create a bigger, more expansive game, but couldn't because of the limitations of the N sixty four. And it was like, it almost that game almost felt like they had designed something that looked gorgeous, and then they kept going. Well, we got to pull away another layer. Oh, we gotta pull away another layer. We gotta pull away another layer. Okay, it's playable now. Well, what's left? A bunch of octagons. <laughs> Perfect. Still an amazing game, though. Come on, come on. Here's another dog welder. Dog welder, by the way, for those of you that don't know, was a maniac who literally welded dogs to people's faces in a <laughs> DC comic book called Hitman from the '90s. Uh, now showing up in the limited series All Star Section Eight. Um. Yeah, I love... I'm a big comic book guy. I like to... I was mentioning this earlier. Sometimes I jump on Periscope. If if the books that I'm reading that week are, like, amazing, I'll jump on and talk about them on there, too. Um, I have a lot of fun with those. That's how you and I met, Yeah, actually, was yeah. over... Was, was, uh, com was comics. Was, was, a, was a mutual love of comics. Uh, yeah, and everybody else at a party's mutual hate of listening to us drunkenly yell about comics. Yeah, it was literally, people were like, and we're done, so let's just let them do that for a while. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, what? Why do I have two minutes and 47 seconds? What? Someone set up us the bomb? You've got, okay. No! Whoa! Oh, you gotta murder this guy. He's got an Uzi. Got myself an Uzi and my brother a nine. Uh, okay. Weapons, I think. Wow. Weapons. All right, here we go, gang. Select button. This is the Ambient most lightning. awkward. Swear to God, dog welder. Okay. Here they we go. brought dog welder back. Yes, they did. Uh, and Bueno Excelente and Six Pack is leading the group. It's very funny and very messed up. Um, uh, new objective. Navigate this Escher-like homage to the futility of human existence. <laughs> that is a hundred percent what is Accurate. happening here. That is uh, Oni. Oni is actually a, a kanji for <laughs> that phrase exactly. Uh, this game is like first-person Street Fighter. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Although, although hopefully. So we've been doing a video. Wait, she series. has combo super moves. Yeah, she has combo super moves that I'm not sure how to pull off. Okay. Unless, like, I have been pulling them off, and I don't this... know that I'm pulling them off, yeah. which is always a possibility. Oh, hey, buddy. Have some bullets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you have bullets? Oh, I love that. Okay, so if this were a real-world scenario, you're running across an empty warehouse shooting at a guy, and he stops shooting at you to show you how good right. his spin kick is. Check it out. <laughs> He's just like, get ready. Dig this. All right. Ah, oh, you right. got the crane working. I got, I got the crane working. Crane, get. And I have. Got, oh. Yeah. Take that truck from Blast Core. Truck, you. <laughs> Solid brick polygon truck. It looks like it's just um, one object. Who was the Who was the middle of Bruticus? Oh. Okay. The the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Shit. He's the. Uh, he's the, a helicopter, right? No, no, no. Oh, no he, the was the, he was the. He was the truck. He was the yeah. truck. He was. Um. Ah, shoot. I forget. Well done, Kanoko. Well done, Kanoko. Oh, those are the good guys. I don't have to kill those guys. Oh, good, good, good. Dude, we beat the first level. I think... <laughs> Despite I... our best efforts, we beat the first level. I think we're allowed to leave this gray hell <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Griffin, by the way, Griffin, an old man who, constantly in fear of his life, wears a bulletproof vest everywhere. Did you see that, like, the 3D model of Griffin is allowing his hair to age gracefully? Yes. Like, that's just, he's mm -hmm. just, he keeps it cropped on the side. Yep. And he, look, he, I don't know what illustration Griffin is doing. No. Mission complete. Now, watch as we ride alongside. <laughs> Yodel, you say a truck, but realistically he was just a trailer. I can't. I can't argue with that. That's right. That's I right. forgot how weird the art is in this game. How distressed is she in that image? Yeah. Yeah, like... It... Everyone everyone off... Like, the illustrations just off of the illustration are yeah. going to the bathroom. They're all just like... <laughs> Ugh! You for... Oh, man. Manufacturing plant. What are they manufacturing? Right, this this one's you. All right. Uh, oh, look at that. 
Look at this pleasant evening. Oh, great. See, this is almost, this almost works. The sun sets on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's just civilian with a different head. Yeah, it's... Oh. Good afternoon and welcome to the Musahi Heavy Manufacturing Concern. How can I be of service? <laughs> Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm Agent Thorson. For, for wait, wait, wait. Uh, I feel like Kanoka's just like, shut up. We're with the TCTF and hereby order to cease and desist all operations. We've reasons to the facility involved in manufacturing and leading technology. She is, oh man, so angry. Of course, officer. <laughs> the receptionist oh. handling it. Uh-oh. Why would you have the red light? Why is it blinking? If you have an emergency. Oh, oh, my goodness. Who's this guy? This guy's a real Barabbas. <laughs> Barabbas has some real varicose vein problems. Yeah, yeah. On his it's More head. like Varabas. I just like Murrow. And Murrow literally... Edward R. Murrow over here and what looks like Ivan Ooze's cousin. Mur <laughs> Murrow looks... Like you know, if you if you go to like a CVS uh -huh. and you go into the toy aisle, yes, they always have like one Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle that yeah, sucks yeah, and yeah. nobody wants. Uh -huh. But then there's like the knockoff. It's like the it's like the cheapo, like yes. not actually Ben Ten toys, right? But like it's like Ben Eleven toys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh look, it's Action Eric. <laughs> oh, there he is. Murrow has clearly escaped. Yes. From the generic toy aisle. That's what the that's what the plot of this game is. Is him? We have to rein him in and get him back to his generic toy right. franchise. He's like, I won't go back. Oh, look how Kanoko is ready to make oh. it happen. Single and loving it. Is that a tribal face tattoo? Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know what? I'm a man of peace. I don't care for weapons. I'm going to. We're going to see if we can beat this level. Purely, purely. Uh... Purely kicking. Yep. Kicking and punching. How, do, how do you even tell how much ammunition you have? Is it? Is it there over here? Go. How did you just get rid of your weapon? Oh, R3. It is R3. Oh! How dare you hit an awesome woman like me? No. No! Wow, nice roundhouse, bro. I'm sitting here thinking, like... Again, if this game had just... Stomp him! Stomp him! Stomp him! Come on! It's not American History X. You can't just... That's fair. All right, You all can't right. just do that to every enemy. Oh. Oh, wait. Nope. Okay. Okay, how did you just pull it out? R3? <laughs> uh, well, I stand up and <laughs> zip my pants down. Uh, oh! I make sure oh, I'm in a R3, private R3. space. Yeah, yeah. I make sure I'm I remember, I make sure that everybody is a consenting adult. Yeah. This is not a functional room. These Welcome. Are not, these are not functional spaces. Just because you can make a door, game developers, doesn't mean you should. Okay. Let's go back. Go, go back really quickly to the, the main area. I want to uh -huh. point out that this desk and chair... Uh -huh. are the first things that we have seen that look like normal human habitation yes. accessories. Yes. Oh, she is impervious to slide. Oh, she, yeah, like she just doesn't care. She she alerted security and she's like, yeah. eh, my job is done. I'm just going to stand to the side, let them take care of it. Matt, can you help me out with something else? This Watching her pull these moves made it pop in my head. You also host a show uh -huh. that is about wrestling. Oh, I am I am on a show called UCBW um, at the UCB Theater. I play a character called Wall Street. I'm a, I'm a heel. It is one of my favorite things that I do. Um, we just had our show uh, Revengeance, uh, which we had actually named before the Metal Gear game came out. Um, really? Yes, about in 2007 Ooh. came up with that name. Wow. Um, Dolph Ziggler came to the show and he did a spot in the. All right, I don't uh, know that event. name. Dolph Ziggler is a WWE wrestler. He was the coolest. Um, Dana Brooke also came to the show with him. She hung out to the side. We had some Chikara guys. Chuck Taylor was there. Um, Fire Ant, uh, Green Ant. Um, uh, oh man, this Tim, is all uh, a Tim Donst. I, I don't. I don't there. know. Uh, like literally, my my knowledge of wrestlers by name. Mm -hmm. I, like if you if you want to talk to me about like 1989, yeah, I, I can hang. Right. And so if we're talking time, Bastion Booger. Yeah. Like, <laughs> doink. If, yeah. If you want to huh. if you want to talk to me about like 
like the middle names of the Bushwhackers. I don't actually know the middle names right. of the Bushwhackers. But like, like once I get to like 1993, 94, I think they were whoa and yeah, <laughs> and the sound of a tongue oh. going over <laughs> yeah somebody's face. Uh, so yeah, so you, you you had all these guys there, and UCBW like there's there is a hardcore following yes for this show, much as all wrestling seems to inspire right. Uh. I was going to ask you this before, uh-huh. when, when we were talking about, like, sort of, like, the way you've approached pop culture, like, as, as a writer and as a comedian. Yes. How how do you gain entry to these things? Like... Because, like, like I look at, like, something like this. Uh-huh. Like, Oni, this is a deep cut. Yeah. Like, at this point in time, this many years after Destiny, like, if you like Destiny, you're probably not going to go back and play Oni. This doesn't have, like, a lot to offer you. Right. This is... This is this is not even extended reading. This, this is, is a wild reading. goose chase. <laughs> <laughs> you learned that on the second level. This is getting this is getting meta. Yeah. Uh, like this is a deep cut. This is like something if you love a thing, mm-hmm. you you dig deep into it. And right. You professionally dig deep into things. Yeah. You dig deep into wrestling. You you dig deep into comics. You dig yeah. deep into comedy. What? Wh- how do you gain entry to anything? How do you get inside of something? Oh man! Well, first off, you make sure you're among friends. No. Um, <laughs> I so I'm a bit obsessive when it comes to the things that I care about, and I'm sure as anybody in like gaming culture, pretty much like any sort of like niche culture can understand, you get you get passionate about it because it's something that you use as like an escape. And the more that I did it, the more that I found I had opinions and thoughts uh, about this stuff, and I realized. You know, I was like, what do I want to do with my life? Well, I want to... Whoa! I love that move. I'll never be able to perform that again on purpose. Um, <laughs> basically, I think you just keep doing something until... I, I think that everything I've sort of found myself involved in, I've done so almost accidentally. Because anytime I, like, try oh, yeah. to, I, I get I get no inroads. Like, I, and you get bored. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, I would love... And I almost find that the things that I that I have accidentally found when I start like applying myself to them. No, that's not that's not true. Um, Show me what you've got. Oh, you did it again. Thank you. Yeah, I think you just brought like if you make sure you're running at them. Okay. Then you can pull off your sweet flip. God, you're yeah. really dying. Um, I guess uh, it's you. You just find the thing that you that you love, and you keep getting better and better at it when you have the time to do it. Mm. And that's the tough thing. And and I feel very fortunate that like I was ever able to find enough time to like involve myself or in 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 Scott's myself in comics or games or, or, or wrestling or anything like that as much as I was able to before I had to like dedicate more time to doing stuff that I didn't want to do. Right. Is that making? Am I making no, any no, sense? Because I feel that, like I'm doing two things at once and neither <laughs> well. <laughs> no, it makes, that makes complete sense to me because okay. I, I, I sit there and I think about like why it goes back. But to I mean, we you've talking. done the same thing. Yeah, like you, I, I've you, done the same thing. You, you are, you are a games, you are a gaming critic, and you also host a show. Like I watch this show, and I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I get a little bit of FOMO watching because I'm like, oh my god, this looks like so much fun. <laughs> um, I love, I, like, like love the concept, and you just like. You've always had, like, opinions and serious thoughts about games, and you turned, and you were always a really great writer, and you found a way to combine the two, and now you're doing it for a living, you know? Yeah, but, like, at the exact same time... Civilian, parentheses, gives ammo. (laughs) Like, this show, in particular, was sort of born out of a desire to want... Like, the entire idea of having people on to play video games yeah. that do things outside of video games is to try and create an inroad for somebody yes. that doesn't already love a thing. But here we are playing a game that's, like, so relatively obscure. Uh, I, I have trouble sitting there and thinking to myself, like, what, what is the ideal way to invite somebody into a thing? And, oh, and, and great... I, I think passion. Like, but passion is not enough. Passion, passion okay. is not 
enough of a way to get somebody else hooked. It can get them interested for a while. Uh-huh. And it's like, like passion, and it's weird because, like, like, yes, covering video games for a living, but at the same time, I look at something like Destiny, and to this point, I have not been able to penetrate that even though I have genuine interest in it. And I talk to a lot of people who have very, very deep passion for it. Yeah. They're like, I love this. I love this type of game. I love playing with other people. Yeah. And I think to myself, you know, like what you were just saying, like, I'm going to try. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go in and I'm going to intentionally do this thing and sort of try and get into that world. And when I, when I do that, it doesn't work. Yeah. And so I think to myself, there needs to be something in addition to passion that, like, passion, passion is bait. Oh it's my not god, I just got fragged! Why did you just get blown up? Is she dead? Yes. She's dead. I got a rocket to the chest. <laughs> no! Also, shout out to the crop jacket that she's wearing on duty. The crop jacket, and I gotta say, like, she was... K- K- Kotoko? Komoko? Uh, k- uh, k- uh, Kokomo. Kokomo? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Aruba... Jamaica, ooh, I wanna take it to Bermuda, Bahama, come on, anime mommy. Okay, <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah. It got dark. Yeah, yeah. It got dark fast. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. The, she should the, be a hidden Street Fighter character, by the way. You're not wrong. Really funny that in the middle of that discussion, being like, yeah, like, passion is not enough of an entrance. Like, that's the bait. It's not the hook. And then opening a door. Yeah. Somebody shoots you in the chest. This this keeps, this continues to be a little bit of a meta experience. Yes. Well, y- you know, I think that, I think that passion is what pulls other people in. Because yes. passion is, um, I think, I think positivity and passion are contagious. I think they're infectious and I think they're contagious. And I think that when you care about something and and want to share it with other people they find that and if you if you communicate with people openly like that they they find you you discover together ways for them to connect with the thing that you're trying to connect them to right um when it comes to when it comes to finding ways to actually like you know like monetize it or turn it into something that you do god i wish I, I wish I knew how to do that better. Yeah, um, I, well, it's hard. I mean, and it, it is. It's very hard. And I, uh, you know, not to not to be like, oh, there's a lot of nights with peanut butter sandwiches, but there are a lot of nights with peanut butter sandwiches where you're like, you know, this you commit yourself to a thing that is a niche, and if you aren't, if you don't have the. So on this show two weeks ago, uh-huh. we had on a an author. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Named Raymond Benson, yes. really interesting guy, uh, and we had him on to talk about Metal Gear Solid because he was the guy who was responsible for writing the novelizations of Metal Gear Solid One. And two. Yes. Interesting, interesting cat. And this guy has had a very fruitful career. He started out in the '80s uh, making text adventure video games and then wrote an encyclopedia about James Bond, but got invited by the estate of Ian Fleming to become one of the, like, two or three canonical James Bond novel writers. Whoa. So this guy guy had an incredibly successful career. Yeah. And we were talking to him about, like, like that that idea of, like, making a profession out uh, out of passion. Yeah. And, I, you know, I said to him, how do you go about making you know like you want to get into writing you want to make games you want to like write novels how how do you do these things and he said very the very first step is come up with a plan b and ask yourself if you could be happy doing that wow and like he was he he said that exact same thing he's like if you want a creative life that's not an easy thing to have and it, yeah, it, it, like it, it, there's gonna be long periods of ups and downs. And he was like, you know, when I was, he, he said when he was in his 30s, was when he was still working in video games, and he, you know he he had to uproot his family, mm-hmm. like multiple times, and it was just to like keep chasing the job. And like yeah. that, that was an era when there was no such thing as like, oh, we can collaborate on something via email. Yeah, and, and like you had to go do with it. You had to be there. You had to be physically present in the offices to do it. And I think that um, 
I think what is frustrating when you're lo- when you're sort of on the outside looking in too is that when you're on the outside, you only see the end result of the work. Right. You only see the successes. Right. And so often that can, as as often as that can be inspiring, it can also be really frustrating mm-hmm. because you're seeing someone. For example, let's say like name a band. Oh, uh, uh, Wilco. Wilco, right? Jeff Tweedy's gonna write. Jeff Tweedy's gonna write thirty-five songs. And you're gonna hear one of and them. And you're yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's so much of that that we don't see. We don't see those days where he walks into the, we walk. He walks into the lab. He walks into the production studio, and he made pure garbage that day. Right, right. Because he was worried about something else going on that has nothing to do with the band. But what we do see are amazing albums like Sky, uh, Sky Blue Sky. Right, right. Um, with any creative endeavor like that, there's, there's so much work. There's so much work that goes into it. There's. It's like a, it's almost like a 90, 10 split oh, yeah. of like I, 90% work for 10% output. Right. And that 90% can be exhausting. And especially because a lot of times with creative, with, with creative jobs, there's so many people out there. It's either a fear of this being a reality or the actual reality of like people willing to do it for free or people we, willing to do it for, uh, on the side that you you wind up doing a lot more of it for... Now, this is the rocket yeah. moon. Um, Where is it? Ah! Yay, nice! Son! <laughs> What's up, son? I would um, like to say that, like, that could... Uh, and that was not done intentionally in any way, shape, or form, but, like, the fact that he came in and then we just elbowed him... Yes. ...in the face. That's a beautiful contextual action, Oni. That's what's up. Oh, and we're back in the lobby. We're back. Oh, boy. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, here's a door we didn't go on. Yeah, this is new. <laughs> oh, great news. God, never, Bungie, just not. Oh, no, this, is, this room is design. unique. Sw- swing around real fast. This room is unique because it's not a rectangle. Right. It has, it, no. It's a rhombus. No, hold on. This is what makes us unique. Yeah. There's this trash can. Oh, you can deposit your clouds in that trash can. <laughs> please place clouds here. <laughs> please. <laughs> Stored in the cloud. Em- empty. <laughs> That's the cloud. Em- <laughs> empty warehouse industries prefers that you take our green initiative. That's how you E-W-I. know it's unique. Because this is the exact same room, but there's no trash. There's, there's no, no trash cloud can. can. No cloud can. No cloud can. can here. Can't store it in the cloud. Find evidence of terrorist activity. Excuse me, base... There is a cloud can. <laughs> well, I don't know what they're doing with these clouds. Chloe, Chloe, I need, <laughs> I need to talk to CTI immediately. Okay, have we been in here? Uh, it's like this is at least like a comprehensible oh, room of rooms. No, no, yeah, we. I think we've been in here. Yeah. Uh, it's it at least makes a little bit of sense because there's symmetry. Yeah. You're like, all right, well, the left side and the right side. If I've been through one, there's I know what's over there. Oh, go backwards. Our our objective is behind us. Okay, now it's in oh, front of oh, us. Oh, now it's in front of us. And, okay, it's getting bigger. So we gotta go somewhere around here, right? Let's over I think this it, way. Is it up? I think it's up. Oh, it's yeah, up there at it's the end there. of that hallway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ambient lighting. Now doors are freaking highlighted. Yeah, you the know, thing with old games is it didn't tell you where to go and all rooms are open to go into. Ambient lighting, 100%. <laughs> I, uh, this is this is a couple of years ago now. Uh, out of the blue, I decided that I was like my my retro spelunking activity for the spring was going to be I was going to play Fear Effect and Fear Effect Two. Oh you remember wow! Fear Effect. Vaguely. It was a it was a sort of cross between Resident Evil and like The Matrix, more uh-huh. or less. Uh, and you played a woman who sort of looked like this, yes. like sort of anime style, and you it, it played like Resident Evil. You solved puzzles, you shot monsters and uh-huh. other people with guns, and it was really like it was a little bit. Oh jeez! Whoa! <laughs> wow! Uh, jeez, jeez, jeez! Uh, 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 this is this is what I like to call the Resident Evil backtrack. <laughs> yeah, the ba- 
which is what I would do in my room or in my apartment as I would play the game is slowly, slowly climb back. Like, uh, back no. Up. no, 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 no. Uh, so in play in playing the Fear Effect games, which I, like the people remember the Fear Effect games because the second one was like the main characters are lesbians. And, oh like, they had these yeah, yeah. Ridiculous, over the top ads, mm -hmm. and it was just really like starring tattoo. <laughs> Not the most tasteful thing in the world, yeah. but it was fascinating to go back and play them because while they, they were not very progressive story-wise, mm -hmm. it was awesome to go back and play something that just didn't telegraph everything you needed to do. Yeah. Like, solving the puzzles was literally about looking at the environment and saying, Ooh, okay, there's this, there's this, mm -hmm. and now I need to maybe do this? Uh... And it was weird going back and seeing, like, oh, how far games have come, but how far back they've gone. Well, that's what I love slash hate about Tomb Raider 2. Yeah. It was a very similar yeah. thing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have just about five minutes left. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I would say that, like, go play Oni, but maybe not. Maybe if you're really excited about the work of Bungie, go, go play all of the Halo games before 4. Mm -hmm. uh, those are all Bungie's, Bungie's masterworks. And go play Destiny, man. Uh, Taken King is out this week. If you are curious about how to get into Destiny, Games Radar has a, an amazingly robust essential tips guide for getting into the game. And come back on Thursday here. We are going to be playing uh, Destiny the Taken King with its creative director, Luke Smith. If you have any questions for him, uh, mark, your, mark your calendar. That's 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 p.m. Pacific here on twitch.tv slash gamesradar. Come back tomorrow. We're going to have another stream at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific uh, with Departure Lounge. And uh, we're going to have something very weird, as is Departure Lounge's want. But we're sticking with Bungie. So we're going to be playing a little marathon. Oh, uh, baby. And if you've never heard marathon, come by. It'll, it'll fascinate you. Uh, this, this was Bungie's first big game, a Mac first-person shooter, which is uh, actually available on Xbox 360 still, but, man, it is bonkers. Matt, what do you have going on, man? Where can, where can people find you? Uh, you guys can find me. First off, thank you so much for having me. I had an absolute blast hanging out today, and you just got absolutely blasted. <laughs> what? What the hell happened? Uh, you had to slide under. I think you had to slide under the laser. No, bullets came out of the wall. Yeah, because I think you hit the laser. Oh, that's some fuck. That's bullshit. God damn it, Oni. I'm yeah. never playing this again. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can check me out on uh, Twitter uh, Twitter and Periscope, the Matt Little. I uh, love talking about comic books on those. It hit me up there. Um, I also am a comedian in New York City. You can catch me at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater on Sunday nights at BYOT and occasionally at UCBW at the Chelsea location. Um, you can uh, watch uh, watch out for me randomly on episodes of Toy Pizza, mm -hmm. uh, which is produced by Frederator. Love those guys. Um, I, uh, I write reviews every week for comic book resources. Getting a lot of comic book stuff. Um, and I have a couple shows that I'm working on uh, that hopefully will be on some network or something or other in the next year. And yeah. maybe I'll, uh, I want to start getting into like producing, uh, like, like uh, presentational content for comic books. Yeah. So if anyone has any advice about that, feel free to hit me up. Right. Um, that's a, I'd love to do that. And now we're just talking about our hopes and dreams. <laughs> instead of the things that we actually do. Uh, but yeah, everybody follow Matt's work. Uh, check out the videos at Toy Pizza. Check out his video on the Force Friday visit for Toy Pizza. It's all very cool stuff. Matt, thank you so much for coming by, man. It's awesome. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is the, the best. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. If you haven't already, click that little follow button uh, beneath the video player. It's a heart. It, it, it's not a commitment. We don't, we're not like, we're not. It's a casual. It's, it's a, a casual, casual heart. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Think about it. Think about it like you're sending a note in gym class. And yeah. you, you're, you're dotting an I. You can still heart other streams. Right. You can heart other... <laughs> Just don't come back with a computer virus. Don't write swack. Did you, did you no get, swacks. No swacks. Is no swack th still a thing? Swaff. Sealed with a follow. Oh. Swaff. That's just... Oh, that, i got to get out of here. 
So, you want to? Did Drive Time shows have outros? They can now. They can now. Ladies and gentlemen, we gotta walk back down the road. We're gonna take it back down that road. Dust of the wind. I don't know where we'll be tomorrow, but we hope to see you again in the great gig in the sky. Pink Floyd, hell of a band. Hell of a band, Pink Floyd. Shine on, you crazy diamonds. We'll see you next week.